Hey Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. So, uh, I started this hobby, I would say, um, I think middle of 2018. And I've bought some knives, I've sold some knives, I get sent knives to do reviews on loan. And uh, throughout this like one and a half years, almost two years of doing this, I kind of have this uh, a greater appreciation for pocket knives, but more than that, uh, I have a greater sense of what I like. And as a result of that, certain knives have gone off and certain knives have stayed. So I want to talk to you about what are the features that I like in my pocket knife. So, without further ado, let's start with the sharp end. Uh, let's start with the edge right here. We have here uh, the, the, the knife blade itself. And uh, there are lots of knife blades out there. You have D2, you have, uh, this is also D2. It's a budget steel. So we have 440C, that's another budget steel. Japan Akudo, that's another budget steel. Uh, this is uh, CTS BD1N, that's uh, going towards middle range. And then we have your higher end stuff, which is uh, S35VN right here. And personally, in terms of the steels, what I like is based on where I live, based on the country that I live, uh, it's hot, humid, it's rainy, you get sweaty. I would prefer something that is more stain uh, resistant, some more, something that's more corrosion resistant. Uh, corrosion resistant, and by that I mean that it doesn't rust very easily. So D2 tends to have a tendency to rust. 1095 tends to have a tendency to rust. So I tend to go away from them a little bit more, which is why I've sold these guys right here. Uh, one way to go around that is that you know you can have some kind of coating on the blade to help prevent rusting. So I prefer a more stainless steel, which is like more steels on this end. A couple of like the extreme end of stainless steelness is H1 LC200N, Venex super super stain resistance. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure that you can uh, cause it to uh, rust in your day-to-day -day life. Next up, let's talk about blade shape. Now, uh, but before that, let's talk about blade grind. I do prefer a grind that comes up to a very nice slicey edge. So I do prefer very high flat grinds or full flat grinds like this. This is a full flat grind. The grind goes all the way up to the top. Same thing with this guy. This just means that there is more space for the knife to thin out and get to a keener or sharper edge. Sometimes you get these kind of like middle, middle or not so high flat grinds. So it doesn't really cut that well such as this guy this guy is actually not a very good slicer another kind of knife that i have uh, felt and tested is uh, a hollow grind so a hollow grind instead of it being flat it actually curves inwards when it gets to the edge right here it means that it gets this uh, very very fine edge at the end here and i really like those i don't have anyone on hand and uh, i don't have anyone on me right now but I do really like uh, flat grinds, either very high like this guy or full flat grinds or you know, uh, what you call that, hollow grinds. Now there is a disadvantage to that. Uh, knives that are full flat grind, they come to a very thin edge. Uh, knives with hollow grind that comes to a very thin edge, the edge can be a little bit uh, brittle. So you need to uh, keep that in mind. So this guy right here, the edge here is not as thin but it's not going to be as brittle as let's say maybe this guy right here. Okay, blade shape. I have a preference to a shallower belly blade shapes, meaning a belly of a knife. So, so the edge of a knife, you have a straight line here, and then you have a belly, and then you have a point. Okay, uh, I prefer something with a shallower belly. So you have a bit of flat, and then a, just a slight belly, and a point that's a little bit lower than, uh, than the top of the blade right here. Why? Because I tend to use a lot of uh, this kind of cuts on my, uh, in my daily life, penetrate and pull. I tend to use a lot more pull cuts, uh, knives with a lot of belly is great for any kind of rocking or slicing cuts that you would need to do. So that would be this guy, this guy, this guy, I prefer uh, knives like this. Go mount flat, shallow belly and then a nice tip for penetrating. This guy here is possibly the sharpest knife, definitely the sharpest knife I have in my current collection and one of the sharpest knife, knife that I've ever owned. The other one that matches this kind of sharpness is the Civivi McKenna, which I really loved, uh, but I have since sold it because it's in a D2 steel, which is not my favorite uh, knife steel. Next up, moving back a little bit, a, a knife that has a nice finger choil or sharpening choil where you can fit your fingers nice for me because it means I can get right up to the edge of the blade. This knife didn't used to have a sharpening choil. This knife used to go all the way back up here and it was unsharpened. So I had my friend with a Dremel grind it off. So now I have a nice like small finger choil there for me. 
and then you have this guy right here this has a full finger choil so a finger choil goes in there like that it does not have a sharpening choil now a sharpening choil to me is nice but because I don't really do a lot of my own sharpening it's not vital to me but if you're the kind of person that likes to sharpen your knives you're gonna want to have a sharpening choil if not you will get something like this guy which is I don't know if you can see it but the edge here is slightly recurved there's a very slight recurved it is not exactly straight and that can happen when you do not have a proper sharpening choil or whatever so I like that. Uh, why I like that is because I like getting up close to the blade in case I need to do some kind of precision cuttings, uh, some kind of precision cuts. However, some knives are not too bad because like for example this guy right here, you actually get pretty close up to the edge of the blade. Uh, so do you with this guy, you get pretty close up to the edge of the blade, this guy as well. Although this guy is getting a little bit further away from the edge of the blade. And then you have knives like this guy which you know you have a good like almost one inch away from the edge of the blade. Uh, so yeah, that's my personal preference. If it doesn't have a sharp uh, finger choil, I, I would like it to at least go up very close to the edge of the blade. Moving back a little bit, uh, we have my locking mechanisms. Lots of locking mechanisms you have here. Liner lock, subframe lock. This is a liner lock, subframe lock. This is a G lock or an axis lock style knife. We have another liner lock. We have a compression lock right here. Compression lock. And then we have a uh, um, frame lock right here. Now, uh, each of them have their own advantages or disadvantages. You have the kind of locks that have your finger in the way. You have the kind of locks that have your finger out of the way when you want to close it. I prefer a lock that um, has this kind of locking mechanism where you have like compression lock, button lock, axis lock. Really like this kind of locks because it is very fidgety. On top of being very fidgety, it also has like zero lateral pressure once you disengage the lock. So the blade can kind of drop, can kind of free swing. I really like that drop shut action. However, nothing wrong with a good liner lock, nothing, long, nothing wrong with a good frame lock. Especially these higher machine ones that Grimsmoor, Shirogorovs put together. I just prefer something that has a bit of a free swinging action. Uh, next up, relating to that, another feature I really like is any blade that's kind of like really drop shutty. So a drop shutty kind of blade, this is kind of a knife geek kind of thing. And by that I mean it's that has to do with the smoothness of the pivot. So for example this guy is running on bearings, uh, washes, but it's extremely smooth. Once you disengage a lot, it's gonna drop a little shake and then it drops. This guy right here, although the pivot's a little loose, so uh, it will drop shut more readily than you would expect. This guy right here, nice and drop shut it. This guy right here, again, extremely smooth, even though it is on bear, uh, it's on washes. Very, very smooth. This guy right here, drop shot, already showed you. This guy right here, running on bearings, so a very different kind of action. Uh, it's very smooth action, uh, running on bearings, even though it has some pretty strong lateral like tension from the lock bar, very strong lock bar. And then moving on from that, something very similar is like what kind of pivot do you want? Okay, do you want uh, washes, which is this guy? Do you want bearings which is this guy both of them have their pros and cons washers tend to favor smoothness but as a result of that being washers it also tends to be a little bit more resistant to gunk and you know, grit and whatever because it's just like metal pressing on metal bearings on the other hand it's like a pivot with like a, a bearing cage and then it has like little ball bearings on the inside of that it makes it very smooth in theory crap it makes it very smooth in theory uh, but it can also be a little bit more like uh, prone to grime or dust or whatever. Uh, I don't really care so much about uh, what washers or bearings are. Like to me it's like is it smooth and uh, does it have a great action. Uh, washers tend to be, I, I tend to prefer bronze washers over teflon washers and I don't mind like a mix of teflon and bronze which is what this guy is. It's kind of like a sandwich of bronze washers with a little teflon in between. This guy also here is a mix of washers and tef uh, bronze and teflon. I have yet to really, no, yeah I've had to really have a full own a full bronze washer knife however that is coming soon. Uh, bearings of course nice and smooth and foreshutty, quite like that. Now moving on, uh, another key element is the detent. I do like a very strong detent. I like that detent that pops out. Okay, this is another one that kind of really pops out. It you 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 
add pressure, 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 and then it just pops out. Same thing with this guy, pressure, 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 and then it pops out. Very, very satisfying for me to have that kind of action. And also, a mark of a very good um, detect is that you can try to make it fail by putting as little pressure as needed to, to, to fire it out, and then it will still fire out. This guy right here, one of my favorite knives. Amazing blade shape, amazing ergonomics. However, detent is a little weak. So, I can actually make this... Oh, no. Let's try that again. I can actually make this fail like that because there's not enough uh, pressure from the detent that uh, I would like. It's not bad. It's still it's still okay. It's not the worst I felt, but it's still pretty bad. Now, you have certain knives that have a different kind of detent. Most detents are, as you can, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but there is a little ball right here. And then that little ball goes into a little hole in the blade and that keeps it in. Okay, and it's like that with this, 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 and this. This guy right here uses a different kind of detent because he only has this little sliding bar at the back and then it has a spring that goes inside like this and then that creates the, the tension. So the detent is not based off of uh, friction from the ball. It is based off of the tension of the spring right here. So that's why it actually doesn't have a pop per se. It has spring tension, spring tension to hold it in. Okay, so that is a different kind of detent. Uh, what do I prefer? I do prefer a little bit poppier. Uh, I know some, like maybe the axis locks are a little bit poppier than this guy. However, uh, I'll let you guys know when that axis lock comes over because it should be over soon, as soon as this pandemic finishes. Next up, handle material. Uh, lots of handle materials. You have FRN, FRN, you have G10. You have your more weirder materials such as copper, FRN. You have your high-end materials. This is uh, carbon fiber, titanium. Okay, that's kind of up to you what you like. I like certain elements of certain things. I don't mind aluminium because it's extremely light. I like FRN because you can mold it to any shape that you want, which is very nice. I like the feeling, the matte feeling of carbon fiber, which is very nice. So that's kind of up to you, but it's more like the design of the handle that's very important. I like having a little finger choil here. It's very nice, a place for your finger to rest. Uh, I like chamfering and rounding on the edges here, which means that it is very uh, comfortable on the edges here. This guy is a prime example of that. The edges here have a lot of rounding right there. And what I do like is to have some form of rounding on the inside of the skills right here so that it's not sharp on the outside and it's also not sharp on the inside. This guy here is nice and soft. This guy here, uh, um, not sharp, but not as soft. This guy here, nice and soft. This guy not only does it have like chamfering on the outside edges here, but it also has rounding on the inside of the edges here. So as a result, pretty comfortable in the hand with the exception of a few hot spots here and here. This guy, very sharp on the inside, very, very sharp on the inside. This is a tendency that you will see in FRN or plastic uh, handle, uh, plastic handles and knives because it is injection molded. So you're gonna have all these sharp edges. Although you can easily fix this with little very fine sandpaper, just uh, sandpaper the edges on the inside here. I've not done that myself, but I know a lot of people who have. Okay, so again, back to this. Uh, I do like a nice little finger chore right here. All of my knives have that. In fact, a lot of pocket knives have that. It's more of an ergonomic thing. A lot of people tend to like it. Some have more pronounced than others. This is not very pronounced. This is not very pronounced. This is very pronounced. All right, moving back a little bit, uh, lanyard holes, not really my thing. I know a lot of people like them. For me, uh, I don't like lanyards because I feel like it adds a little bit more bulk in the pocket. I don't particularly like that, so not my thing. Uh, I do like a deep carry pocket clip. Every knife I have here, or uh, every knife that I still have, okay, moving these guys away, every knife that I still own, because uh, these guys are sold, have a deep carry pocket clip, uh, except this guy. And uh, this guy is still on sale, so I'm still trying to get rid of this guy. Uh, except this guy right here. I do like a deep curry pocket clip because it's just a little bit more discreet. You can keep in your pants and uh, people won't see it there. Uh, one thing I do like is uh, pocket clips that have the screws that are very well embedded inwards, okay? One thing that kind of annoys me, do I have an example? No. No, I don't have an example anymore, but in some knives, you can have the pocket clip screws that kind of go quite high up into the pocket clip and hence it's not like very thick and then you can't really get it into thicker pants and jeans and whatnot. This guy is a good example. Very thin or very shallow, uh, very short, there we go. Very short pocket clip screws. This guy is not bad as well. This guy right here, also very shallow and it's also compensated by having a higher pocket clip. This guy, uh, not deep carry pocket clip so I can only carry the knife this, this deep in the pocket. Uh, I do plan on getting a uh, deep carry pocket clip for this guy so which would really improve my opinions on this guy right here. 
Okay, and then the last component is uh, whether you want backspaces or standoffs. So these are standoffs. Okay, they're just like little posts in the back. Uh, this guy also has standoffs, little posts in the back. This guy as well, little posts in the back. Uh, and this guy, some green standoffs. Now, you can also have a backspacer, which is this guy right here. And this guy right here. Uh, pros and cons. Uh, any kind of open construction, which are standoffs, open construction here, uh, tend to not get dirty as easily. If anything, you can just like blow the stuff out, which is very nice. Same thing with this guy and this guy. However, a backspacer can collect crud a little bit more on the inside there. So you might need to disassemble it and, and clean it up. However, uh, backspaces adds a lot of rigidity to a knife. Okay, this guy kind of goes like somewhere in between where it has standoffs all the way around. So as a result, it's a very, very stiff, very rigid knife. You really feel like this is definitely a strong knife. Not that these knives aren't strong. They are very strong, especially this guy right here with the full steel liners. Uh, but if you're the kind of person that likes uh, full backspaces, it can add a little bit of rigidity. Some knives that are majority plastic, like the Benchmade Bugout, if you get some uh, aftermarket backspaces right here will actually improve the rigidity of the bench made bug out okay so a uh, couple of things i left out uh, i do like torx bits i like to disassemble and maintain my knife so having good torx bits will be good for you uh i would prefer it like size torx 8 and above okay so like these are t8s uh, these are T8s, T8s and all that. T6s are okay, but they have a tendency to strip out a little bit just because the bits are a little bit smaller. But you have certain knives that have like the same size all the way around. Like this guy right here. This is T8, this is T8, this is T8. So very easy to take apart. Very easy to take about this knife in general. You have certain knives that annoyingly have different sizes. And it's okay if it's like T8 and T6. I'm kind of used to that. But this guy has T10, T6, and T8. I really wish this was a T8 so that I can like disassemble it without the worry of like like scraping up the inside of screws right here. Okay guys, uh, did I leave anything out? No, that's about it. So yeah, so this is a very quick video talking about what are the features that I like in a pocket knife. So if you know a knife, oh yeah, one last thing, uh, I do like uh, full steel liners. Uh, sorry, I do like steel liners right here. Uh, full steel liners just gives it that sense that, oh yeah, this is going to be a pretty strong knife. This has full steel liners, this has full steel liners. There are certain knives that don't need full steel liners, like this guy right here. This is full tiny titanium on one side. And then it has carbon fiber, which is a very strong material. And then, uh, with an exception of uh, knives that are designed to be lightweight. So these guys, these are designed to be lightweight knives. So it only has partial steel liners. It has steel liners on one side for the compression lock. And then just FRN on both sides. However, these are very high quality FRN. There's almost no flex in them. So that's very nice. Uh, I do only like steel liners uh, in knives that are designed to be uh, more hard to use kind of knives, like, such as these guys. Um, knives that are designed to be lightweight. I can forgive not having full steel liners, especially knives like the Benchmade Bugger, the Para 3 Lightweight. Uh, Sage 5 Lightweight actually has full steel liners despite it being lightweight. So that's very, very nice in my books. But however, not necessary, which is why I kind of forgot to mention it until the end of the video, which this is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, stay ready.